That was quite an adventure. Yeah, just spent a couple hours inside the legislature room in a working session giving testimony and uh, had a very interesting exchange as I left. The big hound hunting lobbyist as well as like, I think the guy who's now the head of the Hound Hunting Association, the Bear Hound Hunting Association, they both kind of had a conversation with me where we were talking about the ins and outs of hound hunting and I don't know how I don't know, they kind of think I'm the devil. I tried my best to see if I could get a conversation with them in the future, where I could just like sit down and like, let's talk and maybe even get them to have me do a demo with their dogs. <laughs> but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Thank you for coming, Mr. Gold. Absolutely. So my name is Morgan Gold. I'm a farmer based in Peach, Vermont. I uh, raise ducks, geese, cattle, trees, pigs. And over the last few years, my farm's had some real struggles when it comes to interactions with hound hunting. I'm a hunter myself. I, you know, regularly hunt, I regularly have friends hunting, I follow the posting process, but none of this, you know, particularly with the regulations related to hound hunting and pursuit and what happens there, gives me any protections or any confidence to say that I won't have folks showing up, crossing the border, going through, harassing my cattle, harassing my geese, you know, like dealing with all these things from a livestock management perspective, there's no guarantee to any of the way that any of the statutes are written today nor how they're enforced. You know, stuff like this can really eat the better part of your day, but I gotta get back to the farm and go finish my hatchery. Mr. Toby Dog, where's my Toby Dog? So Abby, I'm gonna be leaving you in charge today because we have to go somewhere. I know, it's always stressful when you have to leave the farm. You don't like to do it at all. Toby, you and me have to go to the vet. Let's go. Abby's a little sad. She feels left out. All right, come on, Toby, into the truck. Oh, I know, you hate the truck, I know. Come on, here you go. Come on, up, up. This is gonna take a little convincing. All right, Toby Dog, I got a surprise for you. Allison had leftover dinner from last night, it's salmon. I'm gonna leave the salmon up here on the seat. Can you go in? Or am I gonna have to put you in? Uh, there you go, buddy. You don't even want the salmon now, you're in protest. <sighs> it's gonna be okay, pal, it's gonna be okay. Don't worry, Toby Dog, it'll be fine. You just have to go for your regular vet appointment. So I take Toby Dog to the vet every couple of months to get his blood screen for Lyme levels. It's how I ensure that the Lyme disease that he contracted a couple of years ago doesn't come creeping back and cause him more problems like arthritis, and joint pain and all that sort of stuff. All sorts of autoimmune things actually. So this morning I have yet another thing keeping me from continuing to work on the hatchery because I gotta take Doby Dog to the vet. I swear, as you guys are probably seeing with this video series, it is always something that creates problems here. You know, it's funny, the other thing that happened this morning, actually, when I was finishing up the morning chores, Abby Dog, like, went into full-on Cujo mode. Like, Toby was actually relatively chill, but, like, Abby was, like, in full-on guardian mode, and she ran up to the top of the hill, to the edge of the fence, and just started barking like crazy. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't hear any people. And so I figured it was some sort of animal. And since we still have a whole bunch of snow on the ground and it makes actually getting back to where she was like 
beyond the fence line kind of tricky and it would have probably taken me, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and I don't have my bike and I don't have my ATV available right now. And so I took the drone up and as I got out there and went to the farther reaches of the pasture, what I found is on the edge of the pasture fence, like the edge of the fence where I keep my cattle like inside that area, just outside that fence, there was this massive flock of turkeys. I'm talking, I don't know, maybe 30, maybe 40, I don't know, maybe even 50 turkeys. Like I couldn't even count them all because they were like hiding underneath the trees in the tree line between the two pastures that I have up there. But there were so many turkeys lurking about. And so I'm pretty sure that's what caught Abby's attention. It was pretty crazy. You on patrol? Yeah, I see you working it up there. Good job. So if I go back to the winter of 2020, like right before the pandemic struck, we actually had a crazy colony of turkeys living in the permaculture orchard. This was back before that area was fenced in. It was back before Toby had like full free range. It was back before Abby was even born. And those turkeys that were roaming about, there was a crazy amount. I don't think this time there was as many as there were that one year, but at least based on what I'm seeing right now, we've got a pretty good sized turkey colony living out on pasture, which is cool. Cool. Like I like having turkeys, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm doing all this work to build a hatchery so I can hatch my own birds and I might even hatch some turkeys. But uh, yeah, naturally the turkeys do really, really well in our climate and environment. And particularly given the mild winter we're having, they seem pretty gosh darn active. All right, Toby dog, we're here. Come with me, buddy boy. Let's go. Good boy. Come on, come on. Down you go. Good boy. Good boy. All right, you got to mark your territory. Go for it. It's only natural, I know, pal, I know. Come on. 20 minutes later. That's it, you're done. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you're not going in the front seat, you gotta go in the back seat. There you go. Hey, you did it voluntarily. He usually never does it voluntarily. Let me give you a surprise, because you did so good just there. It's Allison's salmon leftovers. Topsy, you want it? I don't want to give it back at the house or else Ab Abby's gonna get jealous. No, you want to wait? All right, let's head back to the farm. All right, pal, we're back on the farm. Come on down. Oh, now do you want the salmon? You want the salmon now? Okay. Well, you are a very good boy, so you get a good treat. Enjoy. I know. Abby's going to get jealous. The barn cats will probably be jealous, too. But you deserve it. Because you're a good boy. I know. You missed your farm so much. You were only gone for about 45 minutes. And we'll find out your test results in about a week. Abby dog, we're back. Where's Abby? All right. I'll even give you a bonus treat. Because you did so good. Here you go. You know, I'm starting to realize I'm falling behind on this project. And if I go back and look at and audit my time, it's not shocking to see that that is the situation I'm facing. One of the things that I've found over the years has been that there are so many things that can often distract you and detract you from getting the things done that you need to get done. You know, but who can't relate to that, right? Like life constantly is getting in the way of my plans and projects and things that I want to do. And I feel like it's always been that way. Even before I was on the farm, there would be things I'd want to do, but I have to do this thing first or that thing first. And it's just, you know, a reality of the situation. And I, I used to think that, well, when I moved out to the farm, I'd be able to do anything and everything I wanted all the time, and that wasn't the case. And then I'd think, well, as soon as I quit my day job and just focus on the farm full time, I'll be able to do anything and everything that I want full time and not get distracted. And, and that's definitely not been the case either. And the more that I confront it, the more that I realize that's just a function of life. Isn't that right, Ginny Barncat? And particularly for me, that's an easy thing to often happen. Hi, dogs. Hi, dogs. Come on, Toby. Come on. Let's go. Come on. But part of what I wanted to do as I documented the process of building this hatchery was actually step away from some of the, I don't know, I'll call it the shortcutting that I'll often do through the editing process when I make videos and like be like, oh, bing, bang, boom, this project's done. And really just try to show you guys how so many of the projects on this farm are like a death by a thousand cuts. We got good dogs with a lot of energy who are happy to see me. Hi, 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 hi. See, Toby gets good energy because he's calm. See, you get good energy when you're calm too. Yeah, yeah, good dogs, good dogs. But of course I say all this and realize I do have some deadlines because as soon as the goose eggs start to fly on a regular basis, I'm gonna need to start hatching. But despite the fact that we're in March, I still haven't gotten my first goose egg, which is actually kind of unusual for me. Then again, this winter has been kind of unusual as well. But despite the fact that I haven't gotten any goose eggs yet, I am optimistic about this morning because last night I saw this one goose starting to nest, which is a good indicator that 
she might be trying to lay an egg. So let's go inside here, dogs, and see what we got. Morning, birds! All right, let's do a quick tour around here. So one problem I do know I have with the geese is they don't have a great nesting area because the chickens took over their nesting area and they like to roost up top here. And so meanwhile, they drop all their poops down there. And surprise, surprise, geese don't like to leave eggs where chickens poop. Hey look, it's Bean the Blind Duck. Hey Beanie, how's it going? Have you seen any goose eggs? And just as I said that, I realized the stupidity of that question. I mean, she is a blind duck after all. Now let's check the one spot where I have seen geese starting to nest, and that's behind here. And oh boy, would you look at that! <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And not just one, but we got two goose eggs here. Isn't that exciting, Toby? All right, that's good. That means I can finally start filling the orders I have for people who've already purchased goose eggs for me, and I can probably start keeping these at temp and tracking and start filling out those shipments. But then also that means that my goose season's gonna be underway very soon, which means I need to get my act together. <laughs> Now as things stand today, I do have a mostly completed room. I'm gonna try to finish building the ceiling today. And then in the next video, I think I'm gonna finally get around to putting in the insulation, trying to finish this room off. I also wanna trim everything out so that it looks good. And yeah, there's still a lot to do, but I'll be back soon with what happens next. Thanks for watching everybody.